Starting off with some preliminary definitions, if a diagram of this form admits a lift, then we call that lift an extension. On the other hand, if we, you know, do the bottom triangle and if this diagram admits a lift, then we call that a lift. So yes, the terminology is inconsistent and can be ambiguous, but it will typically be clear from the situation what we mean. If a whole square admits a lift, then we call that a lifting. Again, we may just colloquially refer to this as a lift if the context is clear. So we've met injective morphisms before. These are the ones that have the right lifting property against all maps in a certain class of morphisms. But dually, we may talk about projective morphisms, which have the left lifting property, meaning it admits a lift for any PR on the right um, from some certain subclass, uh, some certain class of morphisms. These are central concepts in weak factorization systems, and so I've split up the factorization system section in the NLAB and will focus in particular on these classes of morphisms in this video. So we are ready to define weak factorization systems. So it's a pair of classes of morphisms with certain properties. The way we've written them would lead you to believe that these are projective and injective morphisms, but more on that in the actual definition. So we first require that every morphism in C is able to be factored as a morphism in the first class followed by a morphism in the second. Secondly, the first class must exactly be the class of morphisms with the left lifting property against the second class, and vice versa. The second class must precisely be the one with the right lifting property against the first. So, of course, we should be grounding this discussion in what we know about topological homotopy theory. So even though we don't know about the first property, we do know from the definition of model categories that the pair cofibrations, comma acyclic fibrations, is a weak um, factorization system, which makes sense because we proved that the class of acyclic ser fibrations is precisely the one with the right lifting property against generating topological cofibrations. Similarly, the acyclic cofibrations comma ser fibrations, is a weak factorization system coincides with our intuition that ser fibrations are precisely those with the right lifting property against acyclic topological generating cofibrations. So here's another way to think about this. First we define a functorial factorization as a functor in the following way. Now this notation can be confusing, so please allow me to explain a little. That triangle or simplex notation stands for ordinals, so delta 1 is 0, 1, delta 2 is 0, 1, 2. More specifically, it is all the morphisms between these elements, so morphism from 0, 1, 0 to 2, 1 to 2. Um, and we only go on that way, so there's 3 in delta 2 and 1 in delta 1. Um, so we, in other words, we only mo map from lower um, ordinals to um, higher ordinals. So C delta 1 are morphisms or arrows in C, while C delta 2 has objects that are the composition of two morphisms in C. So what that um, being what being a section means is that we can find an intermediary between a morphism like so. Now we can relate this back to weak factorization systems by considering the maps D0 which take um, the composable pair of morphisms to the second morphism, and D2, which sends the composable pair to the first morphism. If the image of D0 is in the injective class of morphisms and the image of D2 is in the projective class, as we've defined them in the context of this video, then we would recover the weak factorization system notion, and thus call this a functorial weak factorization system. Now, the interesting thing is that not every weak factorization system is a functorial weak factorization system, but it turns out that most are, in particular those produced by the small object argument which we described below. We now have a series of propositions about the classes of projective and injective morphisms. So for notation, we are in a category C, we have K as a class of its morphisms, and we say K proj and K inj for the subclasses of K projective morphisms and K injective morphisms, respectively. Our first proposition states that both these classes contain the class of isomorphisms of C. The proof of this is pretty simple. Suppose we have an isomorphism on the left here, 
and we want to show that there is a lift. But this is clear because we have an inverse map since it is an isomorphism, so the lift could just be defined as the inverse of the isomorphism displayed and then the top horizontal map. The proof of k inj case is just dual, so we don't cover it explicitly. The next proposition states that both classes are closed under composition. Now this of course refers to finite composition, but it turns out that k-proj is also closed under transfinite composition. Now let's do k-inj first. So let's have two maps of k-inj composing on the right and a map whose composition is in k on the left. So if we, drop the, if we draw the top square with this arrow, which is just the composition of the top horizontal and the top vertical on the right, then we can see a sort of distorted square on the bottom um, who has a single k inch morphism on the right. Hence, we can lift. Well, now if we erase that extra arrow, we similarly have a distorted square on the top with a single k inch morphism on the right. So we can lift again, which constitutes a lift of the entire square. Now, the case for k proj is dual, and the transfinite composition closure just comes from the observation that each lift in the sequence so, like the composition of the first two, first three, etc., constitutes a cocone, and by the universal property, there's a universal cocone which constitutes a lift over the transfinite composition. We now want to show that both classes are closed under retracts. We'll prove the statement for Cape Broge and the other case is just dual. So, forming retracts means making this diagram. And we want to show that this, uh, that the induced map J is also in K proj. That is, we want to show that it has the left lifting property against maps in K. So let's get a map in K. We can attach it to the um, end of the diagram since retracts are just the identity on A. And now we want to show that we can lift to a map from B to X, either one since they are the same. Um, well, we can lift from D to X by the assumption that I is in K proj, and then just precompose with a map from B to D to get a lift from B to X. Now we want to show that these classes are closed under pushout and pullback. There's a lot of duality here, and the methods are analogous, so we will only show this for K inj and pullbacks. Again, the other three cases are dual. So let P be in K inch, and we want to show that the map on the left from the pullback is in K inch as well. Well, like before, we need to show that it lifts against maps in K, so add that to our diagram. Now we need a map from B to the pullback. Well, by assumption that P is in K inch, we have a map from B to X. And realize that this actually forms a diagram, i.e. consider if we just rearranged it where B was in the location where the pullback currently is. So the pullback is of course universal, so there exists a unique map from B to the pullback. But we have to be careful. We can't just say that this map commutes with the entire diagram. We only have this diagram. Thus our problem reduces to proving that this triangle commutes. So that the top map equals the vertical and diagonal map composed. Again, we argue by the universal property of pullbacks in the following way. So the pullback is determined by the maps P and F. Well, we have two diagrams, and I've highlighted what makes them quote-unquote pullback diagrams in red. The universal property then says that the map from A to the pullback in this case is unique. In the other diagram, we get that the vertical composed diagonal map is also unique. Well, then they must be equivalent, and we are done. Finally, we want to show that both classes are closed under products and coproducts. Again, we prove one out of the four cases, in particular that k proj is closed under coproducts. We will use the universal property of coproducts a lot. First of all, observing that the coproduct of maps is the induced map on the coproduct of the spaces. We want to show this is in k proj, so of course we set up our diagram. Then we observe that this is just the um, just this set of diagrams for which we can construct a lift by assumption. So then this induces a lift on the coproduct diagram, and we are done.